what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here we're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today we're going to talk about pretty little liar summer school we're going to talk about this upcoming cinematic universe regarding these child ips we're going to talk about final destination 6 we're going to talk about friday the 13th and we'll talk about saw 11 so just to start off here with pretty little liar summer school it would appear that pretty little liar summer school is releasing this spring and we have our first look with plot details uh, Cosmopolitan dropped this information on Sunday night, I believe. It's almost a direct pickup from the end of season one. We end sort of on Christmas Eve with our amazing last tag, tag kill, which is A killing Chip and A on the loose. And then we pick up Christmas morning with Imogen and Tabby unwrapping Christmas gifts with Tabby's mom and getting a panicked phone call. This is what Roberto Aguirre Sacasa told Cosmo Cosmopolitan. And that's all in the first minute of the episode. So we are definitely picking up right where we left off in a really pulse pounding way. Our villain is a female figure of horror, which is something we really wanted to explore in our female centered horror show. We also wanted our villain to feel quite a apocalyptic and terrifying. And because most of our season is set during summer, besides taking inspiration from our favorite slashers we wanted it to feel a little more apocalyptic like something like the texas chainsaw massacre or even midsummer does the texas chainsaw massacre feel apocalyptic to anyone doesn't feel that way to me maybe maybe even more so midsummer midsummer but not even that there's a lot of really horrific imagery tied to movies like that and we wanted to tap into those a little bit and we also knew we had to make a villain scarier than a and it was pretty scary in season one so here's my thing is this female villain not going to be referred to as a but it's just some crazy person on the loose i guess we'll just have to wait and see these images you saw come across your screen are indeed from the upcoming season i probably will revisit season one before i check out season two but i'm going to do the same thing i did with season one with season two on my channel i'll probably watch it early i'll probably do weekly recaps and i'll have a review out as soon as i can but jumping into the next thing Fasten your seat belts because we are getting a Puniverse. So this is all coming from bloody disgusting article I'm reading. It says for starters, the growing twisted childhood universe will feature previously announced standalone films, Bambi the Reckoning, Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare, and Pinocchio Unstrung, and introduce new characters such as Sleeping Beauty, the Mad Hatter, and Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. All of these characters will come together in Puniverse, Monsters Assemble, in 2025, when the monsters join forces to take down the world. All I can say is, I'm, I'm literally cringing as I'm reading this. All I can say is I still have not watched Pooh Bear Blood and Honey Nut Cheerios because I just lost interest in this stuff once I watched that evil Grinch movie. The Conjuring is a fine horror cinematic universe that we've been getting or been dealing with for the past decade at this point. And I'd rather see Brightburn's teased universe of evil soups before we get Puniverse or whatever this is. But do you guys like this trend of turning childhood IPs into horror? I think what my issue is not even the idea of turning them into horror movies, but the movies are just trash. They're just trash. That Grinch movie has turned me off so badly. And it's not even connected to this universe. At some point, I'm probably going to check out the Puniverse, but I'm just turned off to it. I just thought I would bring it to your guys' attention. If you're someone who has enjoyed Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, you're looking forward to that sequel. And maybe again, I'll give it a chance at some point. But right now, I'm just kind of turned off. I'm, I'm turned off because I think the movies, they just look like they're trash. That's just being made for the sake of making trash or at least making some cheap horror thing with childhood IPs. Jumping into Final Destination 6. Final Destination 6's opening sequence has been teased by director Zach Lepofsky. On IG earlier this week, he posted this image with the caption, If the slate is this big, imagine how big the opening sequence is going to be. Now, as I've been stating on my channel and on Twitter, if you follow me, it should be one of the biggest openings I'd imagine because the premonition is going to involve a tower collapse of sorts. Maybe the film will start immediately in the 60s since we know this tower collapse happened decades ago and Esther's grandchild Stephanie is going to be having dreams of herself in this tower and their family dying. Maybe it starts in the 60s. Stephanie has this dream of the past event that her grandmother was never supposed to survive. Then she wakes up. That could be how Final Destination 6 starts. That's just my theory on how the opening could be tied to the premonition in a very different way since this person is not going to be having 
a premonition about a future event, but it's a past event that is impacting their future. But jumping into this next topic here, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th's Crystal Lake prequel show will have Kevin Williamson writing an episode, and Sinistel has tweeted that this episode from Kevin Williamson is rumored to be his own self-contained story. So I think this episode will explore the relationship between Pamela and Elias. I just have a feeling about that. It's not me disclosing something I've heard. It's just a gut feeling because it's also going to line up with Adrian King alluding to the fact that Kevin Williamson's episode seemed like its own thing. She alluded to this in the past on the Happy Horror Time podcast, I believe. The other rumor that's now been cleared up is the 80s writer that's been a part of the creative team or expected to be part of the creative team that I told you guys I have heard about. Now Cine Stealth has added some context to it and that name that they've heard is Don Mancini being in the writing team or being on the writing team. Don Mancini is of course responsible for Chucky and its ongoing show at the moment. It'd be great to have him on board. I don't think Don Mancini is a terrible writer at all. I do just think that what's going on with the writer's room with Chucky, with him also being involved, I see people that often take issue with Don's writing. Don isn't writing that show alone. There's other writers in the mix. I think the other writers are the problem. Um, and I just have to say that as a Chucky fan, if this is true, this is one of the things that makes me think that season four is not going to happen. If it happens, it happens. But if it doesn't, I think this might be lending to why. Not that you can't work on multiple projects at once. Obviously, you can. Diving into Saw 11. So Saw 11 might be in some big trouble. Viranon put out these tweets a few days ago. He says here in his tweets, Dear Saw producers, when you guys call all the shots, we get Saw 4. Five and 3D and Jigsaw. When you let Kevin Gruder be in charge, we get Saw 6 and Saw X. Please trust Gruder because numerous people involved with Saw 11 have reached out concerned about your decisions. It's literally a 180 flip from what I heard during pre-production and filming of Saw X where everyone was confident they had something that was going to surprise people. I didn't know if I would make this post because but we're getting to a crisis point and more and more people every week, some old sources, some new are in my DMs talking about how worried they are. And there's a consensus that Mark and Orrin are the problems with Saw 11. On top of this, according to Vink360 on the Saw subreddit, filming hasn't even started. So a delay is always possible. And I mean, do it if it's necessary. Please do it. I feel like Saw X was just such a good movie and gave me that feeling from a Saw film I hadn't felt in such a long time since my childhood honestly i would say since saw three um no actually saw six don't fall back into old habits mark and orn get your heads out of your ass let kevin patrick marcus and the entire cast and crew cook it'd be a real shame to come off of that high that was saw 10 and then saw 11 is just a complete dumpster fire especially with characters back that we know and love like i'm expecting cecilia to be back i'm expecting amanda obviously john and then to come off of that high and then go back into the territory of what was so unattractive about Saw, no, I, I would hate for that to happen. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.